Hi, I'm Rob Landolfi, Food Service Manager of Culinary Development here at the Department of Dining Services. I'm proud to present to you a series of cooking demonstrations featuring some of our award-winning chefs right here at the University of Connecticut. These dishes aren't only delicious and nutritious, but they're easy to prepare, they're fun to make, and of course, they're enjoyable to eat. So thanks for tuning in, and come on, let's head to the kitchen. Hi, I'm Rob Leandolfi with the University of Connecticut Department of Dining Services, and today I'm with a chef from South Campus, Scott Chapman. Scott, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank now, you. Now, um, what are we making today? Um, this little recipe yeah, we call sizzling sesame chicken, and it's just a, a sautéed sesame chicken with vegetables and a nice light uh, sesame sauce. All right, man. You're on. All right. Thank you. We're going to get this. Uh, Get this pan a little bit of hot here when we have some uh, nice sesame oil. And we're just going to try to get this up. Get all of our mise en place already cut and ready to go. We'll put the, just enough to coat the pan a little bit. All right, now you said sesame. Yep. Yeah. So is that a key to getting that flavor to this fish? Oh, I oil? think so, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, we have different oils we use, like the olive oil that are that's in the infused. Um, infused uh, flavor oils that we use, but the sesame okay. has a nice strong flavor. Okay. Um, and so what you're trying to do is you're trying just to get it hot. Yes, we're trying okay. to get it hot so that way um, you want it almost to the smoking point so that way when you put the chicken in you get that searing sound and it doesn't stick to the pan. That was something when we were in culinary school, I remember we were getting into the If you added it to the pan, you better hear Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, we would have thought that as well uh, with the... All right, let's see, let's yeah. see, here we go. we got to wait till we get that chicken. I always check it just to run my hand and you can feel when it's hot enough. So we just put the chicken in there. That's the sound. There you go. That's right. where you get the sizzling from, I think. So, uh, yeah, put that over there. Get the chicken going here. And we're just going to lightly cook this. And uh, once we cook the chicken, we'll put that back in over here. And we'll let pull the chicken inside. So cook the vegetables a little bit. And use the pork ones. Okay. There's a question for you. How long have you been with the Department of Dining Services? I've been with uh, Utah Dining Services uh, going on five years in this January. It'll be five years for me. That's South Campus the whole time? Yeah, yeah. I've been with South. Um, you know, South's always worked for me. I like to set up and stuff, so I've, uh, I've always been there. Okay. So what are you doing here? You're just yeah, trying to golden brown or just Yeah, just through? trying to get some color on it. You okay. like that color, so that way when you're putting it uh, with the vegetables, you get a nice color to it. Yeah. You get a little bit of the, you know, the fire. You don't want to overcook it too much. And as you can see, like the meat is getting pretty hot. Yep, it's good. Because okay. as you can see, you're getting almost a sear on the outside of it. Um, which so that's, that chicken is. itself, you didn't put any salt, pepper on it or anything like that? No, I, I didn't. Did. Okay. I think at this point, okay. because um, I'll season it. Once I get the vegetables sauteed off in here, I'll get the vegetables put in here. Just get a little bit of color on the vegetables. And you kind of want this al dente. And I'll get the vegetables so they're crisp to the white, a little al dente going. Okay. Which is also a term used with pasta. So I think that's like a good, a good right yeah, there. Yeah. It looks good color. And we'll pull this out, put this back over here. And, and then we'll put it back on the stove, try to get it a little bit hot again, and add a little bit more of the sesame oil. And get that back up to the And then we're just going to add a little bit more of the, um, of the vegetables over here. We have onions, little baby corns, a little bit of. Um, Broccoli, some uh, julienne uh, red peppers. Okay. And that's pretty hot. So we have the onions and the peppers and the broccoli. And I also, this is raw broccoli, fresh broccoli. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like with the broccoli, should yeah. you blanch it off first or do you think you just go with the raw broccoli? Well, I, I myself, I mean, you can use both if you like, but I like the fresh because I like my vegetables kind of crispy. Okay. Where you really don't know, need to oh, have it overcooked. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want it mushy and stuff like that. It's very easy to do. Just getting all your mise en place together and putting everything together. Now I added the onions, the uh, Julian peppers, and the broccoli, and I left the baby corns because they don't really, they're already cooked and they're already crisp, so yep. you don't really need to cook them, you just want to warm them. So you know, of course, you know, even that you work at South Campus, you guys do some pretty big numbers. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure up around, you know, I know dinners are up around anywhere from 1800 to 2000. Yeah. yeah. If you were doing this dish there, I, you know, I'm sure you're not doing it in this little sauté. No, that's for sure. What are you guys working with? We're right working, there? we have a three walk system over there okay. that, uh, that I think they have in a lot of Asian kitchens. Um, and we basically do it in a walk system, we batch cook them. 
Okay. So we're doing probably about 30 to 50 portions per cook. Oh, per batch that so this cook. is an actual dish right here that you have on that Oh, yes. Yes, okay. yes. Great. We do the bread itself. Um, and we're doing, we'll go through anywhere from, you know, two cases of, uh, well, probably about close to 80 or 80 to 100 pounds of vegetables and probably 80 to over 100 pounds of chicken for one service at dinner there. And again, all you're trying to do is just soften your vegetables. Just a bit. soften them. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to overcook them. I okay. think we add the chicken back now, and we'll get that chicken flavor. I did uh, season it up with a little bit of uh, salt there. Well, that looks like kosher salt. Is that yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. That's kosher salt. I prefer the kosher or the sea salt. Okay. A little bit better. It's a little bit grainier, and you get um, you get I don't know, just a different flavor mm -hmm. than if you use granulated. And then we'll add the uh, baby corns right in there. So I add a little bit of the toasted sesame, which we uh, pre-did the sesame, the sesame, um, sesame seeds. We toasted them earlier. Okay. When I was getting my meat and pasta. And those I know you can buy in the spice aisle. Oh yeah, just absolutely. Just a little, just yep. so you can buy your uh, garlic powder yep. or your basil. Yep. It's right there. Just the absolutely. Seeds on it. And I'm going to add a little bit more of this sesame oil. Okay. And I'm going to add the sauce now because I don't. I like what, what kind of sauce? Is that? This is a uh, this is an imperial sauce okay. that we actually buy. Uh, it's like a stir fry. Yeah, like a stir fry sauce. It's got some uh, some soy sauce in there and some probably oyster sauce, a little bit of sweetened sauce. Okay. And stuff. You don't want to, You don't really need a lot of sauce in this. You just want to coat the vegetables and the chicken. And I like to flip it a little bit. Get a nice stone there. Just enough just to coat everything. Just to coat everything. Okay. Yeah. And so again, if you were serving with the South, you guys would probably have rice. You know, We'd have rice, here. yep. Uh, we usually go with two different rices. Sometimes okay. we'll have a fried rice, and sometimes we'll have a we'll always have a brown rice. We usually okay. like to keep it healthy, as healthy as possible. Yep. And then we'll do two rices. And we give that a choice. And that's probably about it right there. That's nice and crisp that's and nice. golden. Yep. And then we'll just put it right on the plate here. Turn this spooner off. Put it right on a plate like this. Get a nice, put nice plate coverage on that. And that's a good dish there with a little bit of rice in there. Go from the rice. Okay. Mm. Mm. You really feel it with that on it. Doesn't really go. Yeah. yeah. Sesame flavor mm. just jumps yeah. right out. Yeah. And it hits you right, really right, 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 right as soon as you get it in your mouth. And you're right, the broccoli. Yeah. It's got just a little bit of a snap to it. Mm. You know, it's not too hard, but it's, it's, it's cooked enough that's nice. Yes, and it gets it's a nice crisp. Dish. And like I said, this is a nice dish that can accompany different rices. You could even do it over an Asian noodle if you wanted to or mm -hmm. something. But it's a really nice dish. It's very healthy as well. Yeah. Something they can make at home. Absolutely. All right. Easy. And if they don't want it, they can come down to South Campus. Oh, they might see you out there on the lock stage. Oh, they'll see me there. We have fun when we're out there working with all the students. So all right, Scott. That's a part of the job. Thank you very much. Thank you very appreciate much. It. I appreciate it.